A lot of numbers that we measure in the world can be described by a normal distribution. And so sometimes it can be very useful to think about the properties of the normal distribution if we want to make estimates of probabilities. Um, we can make these estimates without having to necessarily make exact calculations in some cases. And so we wanna look at some of these properties um, using what is called the empirical rule, uh, which is a property of the normal distribution, and then use that information to make these estimates. And so we're going to go through a couple of examples, and then we can also use the standard score, which is, again, a property of the normal distribution, which we can then use even without calculating probabilities to make comparisons between two values uh, under the assumption that they're normally distributed, even if their other properties are different. So what we have here on the screen is a picture of uh, the empirical rule. The empirical rule is sometimes described as the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And the reason for that is because between one standard deviation on either side of the mean, you have about 68% of the data in a normal distribution. So that is one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Between those two endpoints, you have about 68% of the population. So more than two thirds is very close to that, that, that mean value. If you go two standard deviations out from the mean to negative two standard error, sta standard uh, scores, or positive two standard scores, or so two units of the standard deviation away from the mean, you have 95% of the data is typically inside this range, approx again, approximately. And then if you go three standard deviations away from the mean, you've actually captured almost all of the cases. You have 99.7% of all of the data. So we can, we can use these values to estimate um, how, how likely things are to fall between a range of values as long as we're talking about multiples of the standard score. So let's look at some examples of how we can apply the empirical rule in a specific case. So here we have an example of the standard score formula. So X is the observation value or the endpoint value that we're talking about. Mu is the mean value. Sigma is the standard deviation. And then Z is the standard score value that we calculate from that. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying, what is the distance from the mean? And then how many multiples of the standard deviation is this? So on a typical ACT, uh, the mean is about 21. And each subject on each test, each subject has their, their mean is set at about the same place. And then they have a standard deviation. Again, they're aiming for to be about five. So we're going to keep these numbers nice and round for this example. We want to use the empirical rule to estimate the probability of the following scenarios. So again, the mean, that's mu, that's 21, sigma is five. We want to know what is the probability of between being between 16 and 28 points. Well, let's think about 16, right? So we put 16 into our standard score formula. 16 minus 21 is minus five divided by our standard deviation of five. That gives us minus one. And then same thing for the 26. 26 minus 21 is five divided by five. That gives us one. So we're talking about values that are within one standard deviation of the mean. And if we go back and we look at our empirical rule graph, we can see that that accounts for 65, 68% of the population. So the chance of being within that range of values is between, um, between negative one and one standard deviations from the mean, you're going to be 60, in that range 68% of the time. Now, what about the second example between 11 and 31? So we're gonna do the same calculation. I put 11 in for X, 11 minus 21, that's minus 10 divided by five, that's gonna give me minus two. 31, I'm gonna put in 31 here, minus 21 is positive 10, divided by five, 
that's going to give me positive two. So I'm 10 units away on either side. That's two copies of the standard deviation. So that's between negative two and two in terms of um, the standard score. How many multiples of the standard deviation am I away from the mean? And so between negative two standard deviations and two standard deviations, that is 95% of the, the probability according to the empirical. Again, this is either approximate. The whole point of this is that you can estimate it without doing the direct calculations. And then what about six and 36? So we put six in here. Six minus 21 is minus 15. Divided by five, that's minus three. 36, same story. 36 minus 21 is positive 15 divided by five. That is three. So this is between negative three steps, standard deviations below the mean, and positive three steps above the mean. And so between negative three and three, that is our three standard deviation rule. That covers 99.7% of all the data. Now, we can also use it for other things that, as long as they're whole numbers, they aren't quite symmetrical on either side. So consider 16 and 31. Well, we saw before in part in the first part of the question, part A, that 16, if we put it into our standard score formula, corresponds to minus one. So it's one standard deviation below the mean. And 31 corresponds to two standard deviations above the mean. Now we can also do this calculation, um, but it's not even anymore. So we can't quite do what we did before, which was just pull data off of our distribution and say, well, that's the answer. Instead, we're going to 68% on one side, we're going to 95% on the other side. Now, the simplest way to calculate the probability in here is to simply average these two values, average 68 with 95 and get the middle number. And if you do that with your calculator, you get 81.5. Now, it may seem like, well, how can you really get away with that? But actually, if you break it down into smaller pieces and you think about our graph up here, we can, we can use this 68 and this 95 to calculate how much probability is in just this orange region by taking the difference. So if I take 95 minus 68, I get 27, which means again, these are symmetrical regions. So that means there's half of that, 13.5% in this orange region and 13.5% in this orange region. And we're going from minus one standard deviations here to this end of this orange region over here. Well, that includes all of this 68% plus one of these 13.5% regions. And if you add up 68 plus 13.5, you also get to 81.5. So you can break this problem down in a couple of different ways, but you always end up with the same answer, which is about 81.5%. Now let's look at the standard score formula and try to use that to calculate um, which score is better just by comparing it, but without actually doing any calculations for probabilities. So this is the other use for our standard score formula. So here we're gonna use the SAT instead of the ACT for one of our examples. The SAT, again, typically for each subject test, is designed to have a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of around 100. Um, Tiffany takes both the SAT and the ACT. So we're gonna use our values from the ACT from the previous question. For the SAT, she scores 630 in the math section and 28 on the ACT in math. So what we wanna know is if she can only send one score to her colleges, which score does she wanna send? Which, one, which of these two test scores is the better score? They're on very different scales. And so it's not really clear right off the top of the bat, which one is the best. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our standard score formula to do that calculation. And to do that, I'm going to switch us over to do this calculation in Excel. Now, Tiffany's score on the SAT was 630. The mean on the SAT is around 500 and the standard deviation is around 100. So we're gonna calculate our standard score formula, which is right here, but we're gonna calculate it using Excel. So our X value is the test score she got. We're gonna subtract off the mean and then we're gonna divide by the standard deviation. And that's gonna give us the number of copies of the standard deviation she is away from the mean. Now we wanna do the same thing for the ACT, but she's gonna have different numbers. So she got a 28 on the ACT, but the mean of the ACT is 21 and the standard deviation is five. Now, because we're using Excel, we can copy and paste the formula because we're, we use the cell values directly in here without having to recalculate all the steps again. But you can see from the formula, it's pointing at the 28 minus the 21 divided by the five. So it updated the formula for us and we got a 1.4. Being further away from the mean means that you are you're scoring in this case better because it's a positive number. You're scoring better than more of the population. There's more people below you in the distribution. So again, if you think back to our previous graph, here's our graph. 1.3 is here, whatever that probability corresponds to. But then 1.4 is over here. And if you're thinking in terms of like the better score, the better score is gonna be closer to the right tail, or you can think of it as having more probability being less than that value. So there's more going on to the left of you. So 1.4 is larger than 1.3. And so we can say that Tiffany's ACT score in this case is higher than her SAT score. So if she can only send the better score to her colleges, she should be sending her math ACT score because that is the better score.